The energy sword's design is seen as a logical evolution of an ancient lineage of traditional elite weapons, most notably the twin scythe and the curved blade. Superficially, the ancient melee weapon's influence on the energy sword's design is unmistakable. The sword was originally crafted from hardened resin found in trees which lined the coastal territories of St. Helios, but they began carefully exploring foreign technology, the weapon was refined over time using covenant technology, eventually taking its current state. Technologically, the energy sword succeeded an older type of energy sword known as the Burn Blade, which was created by the Arm Masters of Kikos in the early period of elite interstellar expansion, and was used in the early years of the Covenant. Modern energy swords are manufactured by the merchants of Kikos, the ones that made the energy sword we use in Halo Reach. Closely aligned with the elite's rigid sense of honor, the energy sword is the signature weapon of the elite and its usage has historically been regarded as both an expression of an elite warrior's clerical honor and personal combat skills. The elites pride themselves on their skills with the weapon, which they regard as holy, and believe that it is better for an elite to fall on their own sword to redeem their honor than to die dishonorably. Oh my god, what the fuck is this word? Fishzok? is the martial art form which consists of the use of dual wielded energy sword Mastery of this practice earns one high level of renown in elite society and is a skill set sometimes associated with those around the title of Blade Master. The exact mechanism by which the energy sword functions was still under investigation by the United Nations Space Command in 2552. Within the Covenant, this energy sword is a weapon typically carried by high ranking elites, like elite ultras, elite generals, and elite zealots. The Office of Naval Intelligence were the ones that gave the weapon's designation name T1EWS. The only trademarks on this weapon are a bunch of forerunner glyphs surrounding the ends of the hill. The energy sword's twin blades are superheated plasma contained in a tightly configured magnetic field generator from the group hill. Within the hill, there is an energy storage device that doubles as a field generator, which, when activated, projects the blades with stabilized superheated plasma being enclosed in magnetic lines extending from the hill. The weapon is powered by a small battery that supplies power to both the plasma generator and the magnetic field generator. The battery's energy is reduced for each successful strike. Once the battery is fully depleted, the sword will deactivate unless recharged. Mass-produced models generally feature a simple hilt design, but more individualized models can be quite ornate. Different patterns are typically expressed through the shape of the blade. Different contours can have either smooth curves or elegant angles. Furthermore, the color of the superheated plasma can vary with no functional difference as well, though most energy swords glow with the blue tint. Elite Blade Masters are often commissioned to create ornamented and hand-customized for elite individuals, as such drastic variations have been observed. For example, Arbiter, Reba Mormi's matching pair of custom-designed swords had basket-style hilt guards and radiated a high degree of ionized plasma whereas most energy swords contain the blade's plasma with greater efficiency.
There will be no female to save you this time. The blade's edges are extremely volatile, being able to slice through even the toughest metals like hot knife through butter, including ODST armor and the titanium A-class plating of UNSC destroyers. Injuries caused by the weapon are often gruesome. Stab wounds by the energy sword are in most cases fatal, as the blade passes through the body leaving the organs and tissues cauterized by the extreme temperatures produced by the blades. The energy sword can get you 10 kills because each kill takes 10% of the energy which means the energy max capacity is 100%. The swing rate I got was around 50 forward swings per minute. The max lunge range I got was around 7.21 meters. And of course, when it comes to damage output and TTK, you're fucking dead. First strike! And that's pretty much it for the energy sword. Overall, it's fine the way it is. I've got no beats with it, it functions like it's supposed to. The sword blocking feature was a really cool concept, but I think the reason why it was removed was because I think players were getting better at their timing uh, uh, with their melees against the sword, which as a result had time to shoot at the sword, uh, the sword wielder. Which at that point, the ones using the sword were dying more often than not. Maybe if the timing window was much stricter, that could work, but I don't know. I think it's a concept that should be explored more in future Halo games. Maybe you only make specific weapons be able to sword block, but not every weapon should have that ability. And that's pretty much it for this video, so if you enjoyed, please leave a like, and share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you want to stick around, links to my poo are down in the description. Thanks for watching this video, and until next time, peace. Demon!